just cycling through the notes that I've played on the keyboard. You can also program a pattern on the arpeggiator, which would allow you to select exactly where the notes that you're, that you're playing are going to hit. So if I click on the pattern, you can see here you have step keys, and I'm going to just kind of randomly choose some. And if you listen to it, it's got a little bit more of a feel, a different feel to it. So let's start this sequence again. All right, that's going to work. I'm just going to hit record while this is playing. All right, so again, we'll take what we've recorded there. I'm going to take the clip. If you notice that the clip has a couple of arrows at the beginning and the end, I can adjust the beginning of the clip so that it starts right on the bar I want. And then it's just as simple as dragging that clip over and using the copy and paste functions on your computer keyboard, which is usually on the Apple, Apple C and Apple V, or Control C and Control V on a PC. So now we've got our bass, our drums, and a little arpeggio part going on. I think at this point I can probably turn off the click. All right, so next thing I want to do is let's add another part. I think a lead part would sound good here. And for this, I'm going to use the subtractor analog synthesizer. Again, over here in our tool window, we just double click on the device and it will load it in. And we can scroll through some patches and I've already got one here that's going to work for this song. We'll just hit play and listen to it. All right, we'll just record this. All right, and that one uh, kind of was a little off on my timing, so I think I will quantize that. And we'll take that clip and move it to where we want. Copy and paste it. And hit play on the transport. The next step is that you might want to do some things to add some texture to, this, to the mix. So I might want to add some effects. Things like maybe some compression or maybe some reverb to kind of sweeten the mix a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to add some compression to this drum part. And I'm going to solo that out on the mixer up here. So if you look, here's the mixer. I'm going to click on this S, which is the solo button, so I can just hear the drums. Again, over in our tool window, I'm going to scroll down and get to this M-Class compressor. Now, if I click on the device in the rack, and then I double click on the compressor, you can see that it adds it right underneath the device. And if I flip the rack around by pushing the tab button, you can see the routing has already been set for me. Out of the device, into the compressor. This is using a compressor in what's called an insert effect. Nice. Get the effect applied directly after the output. So let's set the threshold a little lower. We'll give some compression to these drums. Give it a nice slow attack. And I think I might want to compress that bass as well. So let's go to the bass, add our compressor. We'll adjust some settings here to give it a sound that I'm looking for. Let's work with our mix a little, bring the volume of some of these channels down. All right, stop the song. The next type of an effect that I want to create here would be what's called a send effect. And this is going to mean that instead of a device directly going into the effect, we're going to apply some effect on top of the original signal. The way you create a send effect is we're going to click on the mixer and select one of our effects here on our device list. So I'm going to use the RV7000 Advanced Reverb. We'll double click on that and you can see it places that reverb directly under the mixer. And again, if I flip the rack around, what it's done is it's taken the auxiliary output one send into the effect and then out of the effect back into a return. To hear the effect on any of the devices, when you look at the top of the mixer here, these are your aux sends. All you have to do is turn up the level of the aux send one on any channel that you want to apply the effect to. 
I'm going to choose a room. And I think we'll apply a little bit of room to both the drums and to that lead sound. So on the drums, I'm going to go up to Augs 1, turn up that sound a bit. And same for the lead. So at this point, all that's left to do is work on the arrangement, doing things like creating an intro, a verse, or chorus, sort of get the flow of the song. And to work on the arrangement, what I'm going to do is take the bottom sequencer window, which is attached to the rack, and I'm going to detach it and put it in its own window. And the way that you do that is up here on the upper right-hand side of the rack, we click on this top right-hand button. So you can see here that the sequencer window is broken out into its own separate window. So let's work with the arrangement. Now, when I want to work with the arrangement, I want to take the parts that have been recorded and sort of shift their locations around a bit. So for this, I'm going to start off with two bars of drums, then we'll bring in the arpeggio, and then we'll bring in everything. So to do that, there's a couple of ways that you can work with the clips that have been recorded. You can either shift their start points using the arrow here at the beginning, or you can use the razor tool here at the top. I'm going to use the razor tool on this arpeggio part, we're going to cut that, and then we're going to delete that first two-bar section. And so what we'll have now is the drums will start, the arpeggio will come in, and then everything's going to come in. We'll start this down here by pressing play on the transport. So I've got a little basic structure here of a song. Now I'd probably work on this some more to get things like my verses and my chorus all lay laid out. So at this point, if you're happy with the arrangement, all that's left to do would be to save your file, which is disabled on the demo version, or you can export the song as an audio file. Also that's disabled on the demo as well. And that's done right here on the file menu. You can save it or use the export song as an audio file. All right, we're just about done here. So what we've covered is I've shown you how to start from scratch and creating your own song, selecting sounds, recording your MIDI performances, adding effects, working with the mix and the arrangement, and then taking your song that you've created and saving your file or exporting it as an audio file. I want to thank for spending your time with me today, and I hope that what I've shown you can get you started on making your own music in Reason version 4.